Hi there. Today, we're going to be walking through how to add a NetCDF data file to ArcGIS Pro. NetCDF, or Network Common Data Form, is a binary file format for storing multidimensional scientific data, or variables, such as temperature, humidity, pressure, wind speed, and direction. Thus, it is a commonly used data format in meteorology, climatology, and GIS applications. Many organizations and scientific groups in different countries have adopted NetCDF as a standard way to represent some forms of scientific data, though it may not be initially clear how to bring this data file into ArcGIS Pro for display. Each of the variables can be displayed through a dimension, such as time, in ArcGIS by making a layer or table view from the NetCDF file. This tutorial is going to walk through how to bring a NetCDF into Pro and display it as a raster file using a simple geoprocessing option. For the purposes of this tutorial, the assumption is that the user has already searched for, located, and or otherwise acquired their NetCDF file of interest and are ready to bring it into Pro for visualization. This means the file is already downloaded and searchable in a file location of your choice. For example, my file is already located here on my OneDrive under a NASA file, and there it is. Uh, for users interested in NASA data, you might consider using Earth Data Search, NASA Worldview, or Earth, da Earth Data GIS to search for available net CDFs relevant to your field of study or work. Let's get started. First and foremost, you're going to want to launch ArcGIS Pro. After launching the application, you can either open your project or create a new one. For the purposes of this tutorial, I've already created one called NASA Test, so I'm going to go ahead and open it. All you'll see here on the map is um, a simple base map. And I've also brought in a states layer to help with the visualization. Um, secondly, you'll want to navigate to the catalog pane. And you can either create a folder connection to the location of your data for use, or if you know where your data is, you may also just bring it in um, once we go to the geoprocessing option. So, um, if you were going to do that, you would go to folders, right click, add folder connection, and locate um, your data to create a folder connection. My data is already here, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel. Next step is to open the Make NetCDF Raster Layer Tool for gridded data. So you'll just want to go ahead and navigate up to Geoprocessing Tool um, under the View tab. And in the search box, you'll go ahead and search for Make Net CDF Raster Layer, and it comes up right there. You go ahead and click it. Then the next step is to fill in your parameters. So the input net CDF file is where you'll go ahead and locate your file of interest. And if I scroll here, here's my test data. So um, I have three net CDFs here. You'll see that they span over the course of um, three days, January 6th, 7th, and 8th. Um, so I could activate and visualize a time dimension if I so choose. I'm going to select one of these just for the purposes of the tutorial. I'm going to select this one from January 8th. Go ahead and click OK. Um, and then it automatically brings in one of the variables, um, which you have the option of using for your visualization. Uh, depending on which variable you're interested in 
um, visualizing will determine which one you select. Um, so again, for this example tutorial, um, I'm using a Mira 2 NetCDF um, that was downloaded from Earth Data Search. Um, Mira 2 stands for the Modern Era Retrospective Analysis for Research and Applications version 2 um, and is a global atmospheric reanalysis produced by the NASA Global Modeling and Assimilation Office or GMAO. Uh, the goals of this data product are to provide a regularly gridded homogeneous record of the global atmosphere and to incorporate additional aspects of the climate system, including stratospheric ozone and improved land surface representation and cryospheric processes. Uh, this type of information is helpful to know uh, just so that as you're bringing in your data and selecting which variable to um, use in your visualization, you have a better understanding of what the data is actually trying to um, convey and um, which, which one might be the most useful for your purposes. Um, this can be gathered during your initial search for the data, um, or you can certainly use another search engine to get more information about the variables included. Um, again, this helps shed light on the best way to display your data. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just choose one, this T precipitation max. Um, Next, you can choose your dimension values. Um, this is an optional step where you will specify values for dimensions like time uh, or height. Uh, for our purposes, the default um, longitude and latitude is fine. Um, set, uh, lastly, you'll want to select a, a name for your output raster layer. Um, again, for the purposes here, the default is fine. T precipitation max underscore layer. Um, is a fine um, name. And then depending on which uh, dimensions are available uh, for your variable, you may be able to select uh, band dimension um, and values. Uh, but for our purposes here, uh, the default is fine. And then lastly, you will go ahead and run the tool. Sometimes the, um, the new layer is not automatically added to the map, in which case you would want to drag it in. Um, but for ease of visualization here, um, you can see that Arc Pro went ahead and automatically added it to my map. So I can go ahead and close my geoprocessing window. Um, and I can take a look at my newly added raster layer. Um, so the Mira 2 data product is global. Um, so I can zoom out and have a great visualization for um, this, this dimension. Um, again, for the purposes of this, um, I went ahead and zoomed in on the United States where I've already brought in that, um, that state boundary vector layer to help with our visualization. Um, lastly, um, if this uh, symbology isn't appropriate for your purposes, you can go ahead and right click on the layer inside the contents pane go to symbology and adjust it um, according to what may be more useful for your visualization. Um, you can also use the DRA or the dynamic range adjustment to calculate statistics on the fly for a quick visualization. Um, you may also calculate statistics, uh, which may take a while depending on the, the size of your data to save the proper visualization permanently. Uh, but you'll want to make note that the pixel values on the DRA will be different than when calculating statistics. So as you can see, there is a time component here. So I have this um, time dimension up at the top. You'll see it spans the three days that my data has available. Um, and I can play with that um, and uh, click on various pixels for more information. Um, oh, it's on the top layer there. and get more information that way. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, it's pretty straightforward uh, bringing in a net CDF um, into a raster in Pro. So uh, good luck and happy mapping. Thanks.